let's do that. And then we can wipe up our, oh shoot. <laughs> hey there, it's Amanda with my thudding above. Uh, our, our neighbors are getting their house redone, which is very cool for them. And a little noisy for us in the short term. I am making a vegan chocolate and pear, whoops, yes. Vegan chocolate and pear olive oil cake by Jesse Sheehan. And you can see I have a whole new setup. So I'm gonna have like two, two camera action. I'm getting very sophisticated here and hopefully I won't blow it. The first thing we're gonna do is cut some pears. So I like to get, you know, slicing and dicing out of the way before I get mixing. And I'm just gonna show you how I cut a pear to essentially cut around the core. And that way you get kind of big slabs which are, which are easier to deal with. In the meantime, I've got some water heating in a kettle over here because we're gonna need some hot water because this is a vegan cake. It does not have eggs in it. And so you're gonna essentially have a nice warm bath of, of cocoa powder and espresso powder. And then it's going to be leavened by baking soda along with some cider vinegar. I can't really talk and cut it at the same time, despite having done uh, many videos. Uh, so just bear with me here. It is the middle of the work day and I am often like, oh my God, I got to do a video. <laughs> but then once I actually get all the gear set up, I am so pleased to just be here cooking in between meetings. So I've got a meeting at 3.30. It is 3.07. We are going to get this cake in the oven. And then it bakes for 45 minutes and my meeting is only supposed to be half an hour. So hopefully this is all going to work out. I like to live on the edge here, here in corporate America. Okay. So one pair is basically one and a half cups. Now the little extra um, bits, you could put them right into your compost, but you also could just eat them as a snack, which is what I'm going to do later. These are half inch cubes, or <laughs> you could say in my case, very sloppy half inch cubes, because some of them are more like wedges. But it doesn't really matter. They're just, you just want them to kind of melt into the cake. Anyone who went to cooking school is cringing and I went to cooking school too, but that was a long time ago. Now what we're going to do is we're going to coat them in some flour, which helps them or prevents them from sinking in the batter so that they get more distrib you know, evenly distributed rather than just sinking to the bottom in a lump. Okay, let's do that. And then we can wipe up our, oh shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I have the camera here and all it's doing is looking at a cocoa while I'm slicing over here. So sorry, <laughs> this is a new, new process. I'm trying to uh, get used to it. Two tablespoons of flour. Oh, it says you can mix this with your hands, but I don't feel like it. <laughs> I don't feel like getting my hands dirty again, so I'm just gonna do that. And then we're gonna let those sit over here while I get the rest of the batter going. Okay, we need a cup of hot water, which I've got over here, and I'm gonna need my bowl. Okay, there's my cup. And now I'm gonna add a third of a cup of cocoa powder, which I got here. Okay, so I'm gonna add that. Somebody is gonna come up with a better way for cocoa because otherwise it just gets everywhere. So we're gonna deal with that later. And in the meantime, I'm going to get my espresso granules. One, oops, I might've got done a little bit more than one, but that's fine. This is our new 5-2 prototype whisk, which I like a lot. Okay, then I'm gonna whisk in the oil and the sugar. So we've got how much oil? A quarter cup plus two tablespoons. How am I doing on time? Okay, we are down to 16 minutes. Can we get this cake in the oven? Yes, and by the way, the oven is heated to 350. And actually, I'm gonna bake this in a skillet, a 10-inch skillet. So I've got this nice heavy duty enameled cast iron and I'm going to oil the base with olive oil. You can spread this around with a napkin. I find it just easiest to do it with my hands. And now we're gonna add our one cup of brown sugar. That looks combined to me. And then we're going to move on to vanilla. Oops, okay. So we've got, we need two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Oops, uh-oh. These are, so this is, we had vanilla beans left over, so we added alcohol and just covered them, and then it's a way of kind of making your own homemade vanilla extract. And then I'm gonna add the vinegar, which I think is a tablespoon, is that right? Yeah, a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Good old handy apple cider vinegar, helping so many baked goods, not getting a lot of credit. 
And then we've got a teaspoon of baking soda and then some salt, which is going to be over here. Got a teaspoon of kosher salt, get that in there. Oh, and a teaspoon of cinnamon, cannot forget that. That's gonna be yummy. Okay, this is all looking very good and smelling very good. Oh, oh. Is that I was supposed to add one of each of those one at a time and whisk vigorously after each addition, but I'm going to add them all together and whisk vigorously after they're all added. So it looks like it's going to be just fine. Now we're going to add the flour, one and a half cups. Here we go. And I'm going to whisk that in. It seems like it might be a nice wet batter. So, I, you know, you don't want to whisk it too much. So I'm going to be sort of careful with my whisking because that's one out of one and a half cups and I'm gonna add one more half uh, and just mix it so you can still, there's still, I think what he, what Jesse means is like, there should still be dry, unmixed in flour. So like that. And then we're gonna add the pears. Ooh, this smells nice and chocolatey. All right, now I've got a spatula and I'm going to fold it in until the last streak of flour disappears. Okay, I'm not seeing any flour. This is looking like a nice loose batter. And then next thing I'm gonna do is scrape it into the prepared pan. It's 323, everyone. I might even have time to have reheat my coffee before my, before my meeting. That looks delicious. Okay, now I'm going to bake it for 40 to 45 minutes, rotating it at the halfway point, sneaking out of my meeting to do so, and until a cake tester comes out almost clean and then we are going to serve it right from the pan with some, a dusting of confectioner sugar. I am super excited to have this uh, after dinner, if not before. So into the oven, Whew. and we did it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I almost forgot to do beer mission. And today we are having a mile square late lager. It's uh, from Hoboken. <clears throat> And that's all that there is left. Really good. And now it's time to cut into our delicious looking, very chocolatey looking cake. So the first thing I'm gonna do though, is sprinkle over a little bit of confectioner's sugar. Oh, you have two phones? Yeah, now I got two phones, yeah. I'm high tech here. Alrighty. You gonna have some? Mm -hmm. All right. Tad, are you gonna have some? Well, come and get it. We've got Addison. The favorite daughter. <laughs> Wanna bring Fiverr over? She yeah. can have a little, she can not have any cake, but she can have a little camera time. This is for you, sweetie. Okay, boop. <laughs> Here we go. Vegan chocolate olive oil cake with pears. Yeah. Oh wow, it, is, it actually is nice. I thought I overcooked it, but it doesn't look like it. The combination of pear and chocolate is not something I was expecting, but it's nice. Mm -hmm. I feel like I like it with the pears. I think you could go apple. I also yeah. think you could go dates. Mm -hmm. I also think you could do none and yes, just have it be pure chocolate. No, it's really delicious. I like that it's not too sweet. And the texture is really nice. And he was, and Jesse, the recipe uh, person who developed the recipe said the great thing about an oil-based cake is that like they stay moist for several days. So you just like cover it and it'll stay much nicer than a cake that's made with butter. Thanks for joining and I'll see you in a couple weeks. Say bye.